everybody, and welcome to episode 23 of Calls with Paul. You'll notice there is no Paul. <laughs> kind of weird. So let's just call this episode 23 of Calls with Marquette. And my dear friend Lynn Ray with Mambo Interiors is here with us today. We are, you may not have seen Lynn very much um, in person, but we have worked with Lynn for years now behind the scenes. So even if you haven't seen her in person, you've definitely seen her work. Um, in our listings that we see, you see or follow us online in terms of Instagram or our social accounts because Lynn comes in and helps our sellers, whether it's a vacant home or an occupied home, get that home ready to go on the market and look its absolute best. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for point. having me. Yeah, I'm excited. excited to be here. Well, me too. So tell us a little bit. I think there's a misconception among sellers about what what staging is. Like, is it just making it look cute or what goes into staging? What is staging? Well, staging is actually based on statistical data of how we can market the home best. And I always say that staging is part of the marketing tool you as a realtor carry in your toolbox. Absolutely. It's one component of many things that need to be considered. Um, so staging is not decorating. It's rather marketing the home for its best potential outcome and we'll talk about ROI and things like that. So when you're staging a home, you want to keep in um, the sense that how can I show off the most square footage, for example? Um, how is this, you know, the layout going to accent the focal feature? So many times you walk into a home and my, my home's a perfect example of that. I cannot move my couch because I'm like, but that's where the TV is. Okay, yeah, I get that. <laughs> but if I really want to show it off and show off the focal features, you know, it takes, you need to change that up differently. That's right. Like Paul has a Peloton, and if he had his way, the Peloton would be smack dab in the middle of the living room. But that's not going to appeal <laughs> to most buyers that are coming into the house. So um, he's not here, so I'm going to make fun of him a lot today. Um, but yeah, so I get that. Like it's about taking and looking at the rooms and looking at the flow of the house and really creating the canvas within those four walls so that a buyer can really envision mm -hmm. how to live there. I think a lot of times we get really attached to our stuff mm -hmm. and it's hard to let go of that and it works for us and it works for how we live. But it, when you're selling your home, you're leaving. It's not about how you live there. It's right. how somebody new could live there. And a lot of times it's a good idea not to influence them and let them kind of let their creative juices flow about what the potential of that home could be for them and their lifestyle. Exactly. I, I'd say 90% of the occupied stages I go into, and that's where someone is going to sell their home and, and live in their home while it's on the market, which mm -hmm. is what most of us do. Um, the, you know, we start the conversation by always saying the goal here is to, you know, sell your house as quickly as it can, mm -hmm. reduce your days on market, which also helps your bottom line, and for the best ROI, the highest potential. And I'll say, you know, is that your goal? And yes, they're like, yes. So then we can kind of talk behind the psychology. I leave them some handouts to, to read, but it's disassociate yourself from your home. And that's hard. It is hard. And a lot of times people want to say, oh, but we've we have this here for this reason, which is perfectly valid. But, but having, you know, I always say, I'm going to start at the front door just like a potential buyer would because this is new to me too. Mm -hmm. And so I can see things a little differently. And also a certified stager is trained to understand all that. It's, mm -hmm. I always say this isn't about criticizing your decor or the colors you've chosen. It isn't about that. It's about making the best potential to the biggest swath of buyers. Absolutely. We're firm believers in staging, which is why mm -hmm. we pay a credit for every listing and every seller to get a staging consult. Mm -hmm. So even if you decide not to stage your home, you're getting the benefit of Lynn's expert advice on the things that you can do to maximize that. Um, we're convinced, but how help our, our sellers understand how staging helps their home sell. Like what is, what's the magic there? Well, it, it helps on several things, but the first thing I'm going to talk about is the number one thing is your photography online. Absolutely. 95% of... We have a cat visitor. Yeah, we have a visitor. It's not, it's not unusual <laughs> to be visited by the dog or the cat periodically, so... 
Um, 95% of people look at your home online. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times when we go through an occupied consult and I'm taking pictures for my report that I give them, I'll show them the picture and say, you see what I mean? And it instantly resonates with them because it's like you walk into a room and you're experiencing 3D, you live there, you know how it flows. Mm -hmm. Online, we want to make sure that that sofa positioned here blocking the room where it could go maybe there changes the view mm -hmm. completely. So that's the most important thing. Um, secondly, staging comes into big play when um, you look at the stats. Like people decide in the first 15 seconds really whether it's a thumbs up or thumbs down. Some don't even get out of the car. Right. Like some people make that decision from the curb and they're like, oh no, I don't need to go in. Yeah. So I start, I tell them how important that curb is because that's mm -hmm. the, what I call second curb appeal now mm -hmm. is the literal pull up where they see it. Mm -hmm. And your marketing trail needs to be so tight. Like, yeah, if you have a room in the back and you just happen to have somebody who, you know, living in your house who's transitioning, let's say maybe that college student that still can't move on in life, <laughs> uh, you know, we'll make the most of that room, but it's, but it's hopefully long, farther enough in the trail that it gets them to love the house. The longer they stay, the longer they're engaged, Absolutely. the more interested they're going to be. You're speaking my language here, right? One, yeah. the power of photos, being able to make a positive impression, not just by you know the furniture placement so people can see it, but also removing the clutter and making sure that it is attractive to the most eyeballs as possible. Mm -hmm. And, and also getting people to stick around. And, and this is a little off topic, but that's one of the reasons we do listing launch parties because we want to have an experience where a buyer is not just walking in and walking right back Absolutely. out. Absolutely. But they're, they're, they've got a reason. They've got a, a bottle of champagne or a glass of champagne, not a bottle, a glass of champagne in their hand. <laughs> I'm the one with the bottle. Um, a glass of champagne in their hand and they're listening to the live music in the backyard and they get to stay. And as they stay, they get to daydream. And then they start mm -hmm. to really envision that lifestyle. And staging is such a key part of them figuring out how that house could be their new life. So. And, a, and that's a perfect point. And a lot of times people, we have that hard conversation of, well, I don't think I'll do anything and I'll adjust it in the price. But the, the data shows you're gonna go down even farther from that price. Because now you're setting the bar low and they don't have that experience so now they're you know they're like well maybe if it was this where staging is always going to amplify it up here and the biggest stat that i say over and over and over is staging is always less than that first price reduction absolutely so for example um give us an idea of what staging costs because okay. that will help me kind of translate that into numbers for price reductions absolutely so you guys are are on board with staging. You realize it's part of that marketing toolbox. Mm -hmm. A lot of good realtors do because again, I'm a very small part of all the things you do. Right. So with an occupied stage, typically the realtor will pay for that and that's $250. You get a report and then I always tell, you know, my sellers and feel free anytime to text me as many pictures as you want mm -hmm. after they've done it or moved it or, you know, we discuss paint colors, whatever that is. Then from there, they can, they might just need to take to the next level, which is an accessory package. And that might be where the only art they have are personal photos. And I'm not a believer that you strip the home of every personal photo, but if the only thing there is personal photos, people walk through and have that idea, well, um, these people have a very nice house, not I see myself in this house. Oh, I do. And I'm like, oh, what a cool vacation. That's a cool place to visit. Oh, those kids are adorable. Yeah. Like and now all of a sudden I'm not looking at the house. I'm looking at the people that live yeah. there. Yeah, for sure. Or there might, and there might be negative connotations with that. Somebody doesn't have children. You have a lot of pictures and a lot of toys, right. things like that. So an accessory package will vary based on what we bring in. We have two packages, $300 and $450. And it just kind of says X amount of art. Maybe you don't want to go out and invest in some white towels. White towels is, you know, like the easiest thing that someone can do. I'll be like, go to Costco. You'll always use them. They could become rag towels, you know, do that. But we'll, we, can, we can do as much service there. Mm -hmm. And then you get into vacant staging. And, and, you, and let me stop there because you also, am I right, you've done this for us recently, help people pack, 
Yes. You've helped people figure out how to declutter. Yes. Like, okay, you've helped people be like, okay, you don't have new bedding. I'm going to loan you some bedding. Yes. Um, you need an end table. Like, mm -hmm. you can add or subtract as much or as little as you right. need to for that occupied stage. Am I right? Exactly. And your packing help was gigantically impactful because we had a client that was moving out of um, the city uh -huh. and had a really tight deadline. And I was looking at this um, single widower going, I don't know how that's going to happen. And you came in and made it happen. Yep. We can do that. We have a great team. Um, so yeah, there's that aspect. I, what I often say is a stager is really a problem solver, that's a, a problem solver with special, with not just space and decor, but I had a client this morning that we're working on his condo and I met the painters there and he was like, I have all this great artwork, but I'm not taking it with me. It's worth a lot. So it's not really perfect for staging art um, in terms of the estimate. And so I got a guy to come pick it up, take it to home consignment. They're going to consign it. He was so thankful because he's like, I'm pulling out of town tomorrow. What do we do? Mm -hmm. So we can help with all those things. So the invest eliminating the stress. Yes. Out of the move. Exactly. Yeah. And we packed for him as well because it cool. just made it easier for him. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So then on a vacant stage, that's where um, you're moving out and moving on. That's what I call that. And sometimes people don't even consider that as an option. And then they go, you know, honestly, it'd just be easier to take my stuff and go. And sometimes I'll, I'll just say the numbers. If, you know, if you're keeping your stuff here and you're going to have to move it twice, staging maybe less. Mm -hmm. And you're done. You don't have to worry about it. So that'll run what the, the key areas usually do are living, dining, and the master. Mm -hmm. Or there may be that space when you first walk in that wants to be an office or that. And I wanted to say you guys are fantastic on, I love to know the demographics. Who are the buyer demographics? Mm -hmm. You know, when you're selling your home, everybody's the buyer demographic. But the reality is, you know, the way the house is built, the neighborhood, schools, uh, location, obviously, is going to play into who we're trying to attract, and we want to make sure that comes across. Mm -hmm. um, so I love working with you and having that discussion. So vacant stage can come in and style it to be exactly who we think it's going to appeal to. So and for, sometimes you have a funny space. Like sometimes there's a room where you're like, I'm not really sure what mm -hmm. this is and the staging can help people envision that it could be an office or a mm -hmm. play space or a workout room or, or whatever right but back to the cost so so give me an idea of range I know it's okay. hard because yeah, it depends yeah. on how much or how little and we know that a console that we would cover is two hundred fifty dollars but in general how much you know as we think about price reductions in comparison to yeah. the cost of staging what what kind of ranges are we looking at so your first initial cost sets up the staging fees and I call the in and out, the delivery and the pickup. And then there's the rental fees. So mm -hmm. the second month would be third month. As many months you need, you're only paying for those rental fees. So on the front end, you know, let's say a 2,400 square foot house priced at 500,000 is going to run somewhere between 2,000 to 2,600 in staging. In staging, what's that variable? That great room might be really great, big. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're going to need to bring, it's really based on how much furniture you're bringing mm -hmm. in and the scale. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'm bringing lots of big art, that's a whole different world than bringing a few mm -hmm. small things. Mm -hmm. Or the, the, you know, the price point can dictate a little bit too. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, my furniture will go, I'll, I'll put the same thing in a $200,000 home that might go in a million dollar home if the scale works and it's correct, mm -hmm. you know, it looks good. Um, but you know, that can be the variable. So, um, it, it seems like an expensive cost, but when you can, you go back to that staging is always less than your first price reduction. Well, that's why I asked, right? So if you're mm -hmm. saying it, and I'm glad cause your number was right where I thought it would be. Um, so I'm glad I'm kind of there. Paul would be proud. Um, <laughs> 2600 to, you know, let's just even say it's 3000 mm -hmm. Most price reductions are not yeah. going to be less than $5,000. Right. I mean, Paul, at least with his 25 years of experience, is going to try to price things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's different pricing strategies, but we're going to try to price things within bands 
that match what buyers are searching for. Mm -hmm. And very rarely are you going only $5,000 above a band. You're right. usually a much higher ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 above a band. So normally, and he can correct me later if I'm wrong, um, but normally our price adjustments are going to be larger than a $5,000 increase. Yes. So it is really well worth it to invest in the staging in the beginning at the front end so that you don't have to make a larger leap in a price adjustment later. That's mm -hmm. one. The second thing I would say is that from our perspective, your best opportunity to get that home sold is its first week on the market, right? You exactly. have that first impression. You have that first impression when people are looking at it online. You have that impression when they walk in the home. And if you decide to stage later, the home will look different. We would pay to have new photos taken so that it shows up differently in the photographs. But some people start going, oh, well, I recognize that exterior flip. I'm not, I'm scrolling past that. Exactly. I'm not stopping and I'm not looking at it. So we want to really try to get that engagement and have people, you know, that, that yeah. pop, that first impression yeah. with, that staging brings that first moment that it's on the market so that people have that wow. And I like to kind of say that, that Lynn takes things from blah to ah. Um, so <laughs> trademark 2019. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. So, um, yeah, and the other thing on that real quick is, you know, go look at a house online that isn't staged. You can tell. I focus in on what's the flooring. Oh, I don't like that tile. Those are weird drapes. And then you look at it after. Nobody's looking at the drapes. And it's not that um, you wouldn't want to care about the floor. That is important. But it neutralizes the negatives. Mm-hmm. So it changes the perception as well. And that's that's the real value. For mm -hmm. sure. Okay, we've talked about occupied staging, vacant homes, costs. Is there anything else about staging that you think our clients should know about? Yes. So according to Bankrate, uh, bankrate.com, staging is worth, the ROI on staging is 586%. That means not 5.8, 5 586. 100. That's right. And 86 percent. So for every one dollar, you get five dollars and eighty-six cents. Get my hands in here. <laughs> Did a little Ricky Bobby here. Um, to return on the investment. So that's um, another huge thing. Is that you know, and again, that ROI can be less, you know, if you're paying a mortgage and it sells in that first you know weeks, mm -hmm. that's less mortgage payments you're having to make. And it also could be, you know. People, some it, it's shown that people come in and it just tips that scale, especially mm -hmm. if you're trying to get the most you can for the house on that because you've done your due diligence on that. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, okay, I have a fun question. I don't, I, I don't want to put you on the spot. Okay, but I'm curious because I know that Paul has seen some really crazy stuff in his <laughs> time in real estate. Um, and I bet you have too. Yes. So I'm going to ask you, what is the craziest advice or situation you've had to counsel a client about when it comes to staging? Like, you know, hey, that creepy doll collection that you mm -hmm. have, maybe you need to like pack that up or mm -hmm. like, well, tell, tell us some, tell us some stories, Lynn. Okay. So I've got some good ones. So the very first consult I went on ever, ever. <laughs> and I was like, I was there, I was outside for 20 minutes just because I'm always in a little bit early but it was like yeah this was crazy and I immediately pull up and I'm like oh this isn't gonna be good <laughs> because the curb appeal was so bad they had broken fountains you know I was like well landscaping mulch you know painting the front door I always like to give people easy things they can do mm -hmm. you know so real quick black Make sure I receive glossy black as a fantastic color for a front door mm -hmm. and red because it stimulates the appetite. Go to Target. How much do you spend? Way more than you planned. <laughs> anyway, um, so I pull up to this house and, and I wait and I go in and I'm really doing my due diligence to make sure I've got everything I need. And I walk in and it has a little pony wall and right to the right is the formal living room. And there's a chandelier there that goes about five inches from the coffee table down, and it's at least 60, 70 inches wide. It's like, it's hanging in the middle of the It's room. hanging in the middle of the room, so you can't get to the outdated couches that are sandwiched all the way around the room. And I had no words. I was like, 
<laughs> you have to learn to be diplomatic. I was like, are, in my mind, are all houses like this? I don't think they prepared me for this in my training. What am I doing? <laughs> Is this really something I should be doing? You know, I just couldn't <sighs> do that. And then as you went through the house, it was about 1,900 square feet. There were seven 70 inch TVs. So it was a case where seven. I think it, it's classic where they could, maybe they could afford it or were gifted it, or I don't know what the situation was. But I had to try to explain how important it was to get that out of there. You know, because A, you couldn't walk into the room and nobody, you know, would know what to do. And so that was a, uh, a really good one because there were they oh and there was a um, large ice chest in the bed in the um, bathroom master bath like dead body ice chest and, okay. I, and I was trying to figure out like is this a medical condition you have to keep something up here I it, the whole thing was just so bizarre and so it was a really good um, there's definite language, you know, I use the word, it's very taste specific, and that chandelier was very taste specific. Oh, I like that. Can yeah, I I'm gonna start you can. It? Not instead of saying, that's ugly. I'm just exactly. Saying, it's very taste specific. And, okay. and there again, a lot of uh, a trained stager can, you have a lot of those stats to explain to them. In that case, she was, she was having negative square footage. Mm. So I always say, if apples to apples, your house and the neighbor's house on the sale for the same Mm -hmm. Same size, same everything. If your house is packed in this situation because of the large chandelier, or everybody still has their big armoires that nobody plans on moving, but mm -hmm. it's been there forever and it's a pain to move, you know, that actually negates your square footage because if it's a takes up 300 square feet in a room and you're at this price point, mm -hmm. the buyer coming through is going to remember as. Well, on paper it says it's the same, but that room, that was a felt lot smaller. smaller. Felt smaller. Yeah. So um, definitely having, being able to walk into a room, so maybe, maybe a first step in understanding that. And I did have a house with creepy dolls, so um, yeah. And there's, there's many more, but I think the chandelier probably, because I kept thinking, did they win it at Vegas? Like, I, I, I just got my car and I couldn't get my head around that, mm. so... Okay, well, I didn't prepare you for this, but I'm going to ask you one uh -huh. more thing because we're going into the holidays. It's mid-October. Yes. We're heading into Thanksgiving and then shortly thereafter Christmas. Any suggestions for sellers who are looking at staging between mm -hmm. now and the end of the year about holiday decor? Right. A lot of times we tell, uh, it, it, well, we always say um, nothing religious, political, and personal on the staging. Um, but I was, like we were saying, I really well done family photos sprinkled here and there. I think it's fine. It, you, people live there. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to holiday decorating, I think what's so important is do not overdo it. Keep it simple. So maybe you always do garland everywhere and all your mantles and that. But again, you, we love it. But if, like most people, I love it for about the four weeks and then December 27th, I'm like, is it too soon to start taking it down? You know, we... yeah. We enjoy it. We enjoy it while it's up, but it comes down, and instantly you feel like, oh, it's it's more spacious. It's clean. It's mm -hmm. all these things. So this is the time of year to keep it simple. Put up a tree if you always put up a tree, or put up your menorah, whatever that is. But just don't overkill it. Um, I'm I'm in the overkill category. Mm -hmm. Most people. We we have eleven trees. Okay. So. All right. Anyway, all right, all right, you guys. Well, that has been great. You have been giving Thank us some you. really good insights. I hope it's helpful to you guys mm -hmm. as you're considering selling your home to understand the value of staging and how it really helps get you more money, get it sold quickly, attracts buyers, and helps buyers envision what it would mm -hmm. be like to be there. If you have any questions, I encourage you to reach out to Lynn Ray at Mambo Interiors. If you've got real estate related stuff, call Paul, not me, uh, and we would be happy to help you out. And uh, thanks for tuning in on episode 23, and we will yeah. catch you next Wednesday for episode 24. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you.